And this as a global number of COVID-19 cases surpassed the 40 million mark on Monday, according to Johns Hopkins University. Now, the world has registered more than 1.1 million deaths since the beginning of the pandemic. And the U.S. is the country that has recorded the most cases so far with more than 8.1 million infections, followed by India with more than 7.5 million cases. And then Brazil comes in third with more than 5.2 million. The fall surge appears to be here, though. Cases of COVID-19 are on the rise in most states, and some health experts say it could be a while before that trend comes to an end. Yeah, so let's go out to John Lawrence now with the latest. The whole scary part about this is that we haven't even yet started flu season. The United States is averaging at least 55,000 new known COVID-19 cases per day. That's more than a 60% hike since mid-September. I'm extremely worried, and epidemiologists have been predicting a fall spike for a long time. As of Sunday, only two states, Missouri and Vermont, are showing at least a 10% drop in new cases. When you have people congregating en masse, not wearing masks, not doing physical distancing, barely using hand sanitizer, those are the perfect conditions in which you get the spread of the coronavirus from one person to another. Despite the increase in cases and deaths, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the top infectious disease expert in the nation, does not want to close down the country again. Put shut down away and say we're going to use public health measures to help us safely get to where we want to go. Some state leaders are pushing new restrictions while vaccine research and testing continues. Most Americans are going to be getting vaccinated in 2021 and we're probably looking at a March, April, if things go very well, time frame when, a, when a, let's say, a large proportion of American people uh, get access to vaccines. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Yuma County held their first saliva testing event, grabbing snapshots of the percentages of positive cases. 671 people were given coronavirus saliva tests, while 36 people took nasal swabs. Now, all of this will help the county gauge where we are at with our coronavirus numbers in order to determine if we can move to phase two of the reopening process. Residents were required to register in advance and could attend with or without symptoms. The county emphasized the importance of attendance because of those people people who may have the virus and be asymptomatic. The testing is really critical, both for going back to school, but also reopening businesses. If you know whether or not you're positive or negative, you can make a smart decision. If you know you're negative, you're safe to reenter the school. If you know you're positive, you know you need to quarantine and there needs to be contact tracing. Now, this event took place at Arizona Western College, and there will be another saliva testing event at the Welton Library this upcoming Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon. And with that being said, Yuma County confirmed 31 new cases of the coronavirus on Friday. And keep in mind, the new numbers will be released later today. And this brings the county total to 13,120 cases. And there were also two new deaths reported with the death toll now at 351. Once the county gets the results of the saliva tests that were given, they can determine if it is safe to transition into the next phase of the reopening process. Imperial County now has a total of 12,410. 10 cases along with 335 deaths. There are also 335 active cases and more than 11,700 people have recovered from the virus. All right, and happening locally, we now know why Interstate 8 was shut down for hours over the weekend. Yuma Police Department confirmed to News 11 that an officer-involved shooting took place. Now, the officers involved are thankfully okay and have been placed on administrative leave following department protocol. The suspect is a 31-year-old man who was armed with a handgun. After a brief exchange, he got hurt and was transported to a Phoenix area hospital in serious condition. New viewer video shows just how big that scene was. You can see law enforcement units lining the highway with lights and sirens on. And the incident that temporarily closed the I-8 at South 8th Avenue and uh, Half E. Now, YPD responded to the area around 8.30 with assistance from multiple agencies, including DPS. And regionally, police in Phoenix are continuing their search for a suspect involved in a shooting over the weekend. Seven people suffered injuries after someone opened fire at a popular food truck stopped at a strip mall roughly 15 miles outside of Phoenix. Among the people injured, there were three adults and four children between the ages of 1 to 16. The one-year-old is 
is an extremely con critical condition. Police said an altercation between a man and woman took place in the parking lot hours before the shooting and a food truck employee intervened. It's still not clear if that shooting and the altercation are connected. Detectives are still working through physical evidence and witness accounts of the incident, but police are looking for suspects reportedly driving a box style car similar to a Kia Soul. And drivers should expect some minor delays in the foothills. Maintenance crews are scheduled to improve traffic signals at the intersection of Foothills Boulevard and South Frontage Road. Now, all right turn lanes at that intersection will be closed, including the right turn lane of the I-8 eastbound off-ramp. Work will start today at 4 p.m. and end tomorrow at 5 p.m. Drivers should allow extra travel time and plan for possible delays.